You've officially tuned in to the Epiphany Podcast, and I'm your host, Joanna Lynn. Thanks for joining me on my journey of spiritual growth, restoration, and most importantly, transformation. You've got a front row seat, so take my hand as we journey together. We're on the Epiphany, y'all. Hey, everybody, it's your girl, Joanna Lynn, and we are here with the Epiphany Podcast, episode number 23, y'all. The art of patience to be or not to be patient. Why is patience so important and how can we act in patience? I really want to talk about, for one, patience with God's people. At some point, you have to realize that being impatient is just selfish. Um... The definition of patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering. But here's the catch, without getting angry. It makes me think about anytime I think about God or anything in life, I've I've learned to associate it with like a parent-child relationship. And I think about raising a child. I think about my own parents raising me. You know, it takes nine months for your beautiful bundle to um, properly cultivate um, in the right atmosphere. When things go wrong um, within a mother's body or even out in the world that cause things, cause trauma to her body, it can affect the growth or ultimately the the life of the child that she's carrying. Um, but even once that child is born, it is your job as a parent, and this is a job every single day of your life, to teach your child. And the biggest way that you can teach them is with patience. When you're teaching a child to talk or to even walk, when a baby is learning to walk, You know, they'll grab on the table and they may stand up and they may fall, but they get up and they try and they try. But we as people, when that child falls, do we just scream and shout or do we encourage them? Come on, baby. You can do it. Come on. Come to mama. Come to daddy. Come to auntie. We encourage them. We support them. And that's what really patience is about. Patience is a form of self-control, but it's also a form of support. In Colossians 3 and 12, it says, Since God chose you, he chose you to be the holy people that he loves, you must clothe yourself in tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. I, I think about elderly um, people. I personally love elderly people. I look at an older person and I see one of the most beautiful things that God ever created. I see that when I look at babies, I see life and I see new possibilities. But when I see an older person, I see beauty from pain. I see sacrifice. I see um, strength, courage, boldness. I see everything that God told us to be, everything that God encourages from us. I see resilience. Um, The list could go on and on, but when I see an older person, even one of them old grumpy ones, I see light, I see beauty, I see passion. Um, You know, some of us are in our 20s and 30s and even 40s. And and sometimes we get to that point where we're like, "I, I just don't think I can make it another day. But when you come in contact with the older generation, 60, 70, 80, you know, I can't even imagine living that long. And it makes me think about my own mother or my parents or my grandparents. You know, sometimes 
you hear this saying where they're like, oh, well, you know, just let them let them do that. They've earned that. A lot of that is true, and I'm not saying that it just gives an older person free reign to treat people like crap, because there are some older people who take advantage of the fact that they're old, and they just think they can talk to you any kind of way, And but I, I'm not here to discuss that part of them. I'm here to discuss the part of them that deserves our attention. Um, at some point in your life, there is going to be an aging human that you are going to be either connected to, in relation with, that you love or required to assist. Because uh, the fact is, majority of us all have, you know, have parents in our lives or have had parents. Um, hopefully, if we have thriving and healthy marriages, one day we will get to an older age where, you know, we may not be the best version of ourselves or our spouse may not be. Um, you may even live long enough to get to the age where your children are aging. Um, and we have to practice patience because patience is a learned behavior. Patience is something that we choose. That's why the scripture says, clothe yourself in patience because it's something that you have to act on every day is no different than waking up and putting on a shirt or a pair of socks. You have to intentionally choose to put on the clothing of patience when dealing with God's people and dealing with God's people mean those people in your lives, the elderly, the young, and the people that we really don't want to have business with the people that we meet out on the street, on the workforce, in church, um, in restaurants and communities, people that we may not see eye to eye with, but God loves them. You know, when I think about my mother getting older and um, there are some times when she just frustrates the whole mess out of me. Um, I can remember talking to my brother on several occasions where because I'm I'm way more patient than he can be and He'll say, you know, she's already asked me that question five times. And I said, well, Josh, I don't care if she asks you that question 10 times or 20. You answer her every single time. Just like she did for us. Just like, you know, I, I always look at things from another person's perspective. How can I, in my right mind, stand here and scream and holler at my mother because she doesn't understand or because she's forgotten. Do you know how patient she was with me? Do you know as a child how many times I probably learning to talk said, what's that? What's that? Mama, what's that? What's that? What is that for? What is that for? What is that for? Okay, you get it. <laughs> um, I can remember everyday things. You know, if you're a parent, you constantly have to predict what's going to happen next. Joanna, did you bring did you bring your purse? You know, you had your ID in there. Don't forget your ID. You have to have it when you're driving. Um, don't forget your number two pencils. Today is test day. You have to have those pencils to do your tests at school. Or have you eaten today? Have you um, have you showered today? There's so many things that our parents do for us that they remind us and it required patience. Now, yes, there are times when our patience, uh, their patience runs thin and that's natural. Um, but I think it's our responsibility as parents and as children, as siblings, as family and friends to act in patience. I, I know that um, sometimes when people act out of anger it is not always intentional but even when you're dealing with an angry person you have to be patient you really have to put yourself in those shoes that's always the first thing I do if I have a friend or a person um like on my job I deal with customers every day and someone upsets me the first thing I do is say wait 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 what did they go through today? What have they been through? What were they walking through that caused them to act in such a manner that may not be flattering to them? 
something so simple and scientific, um, water boils at a point of 212 degrees, just hot, you know. How many of you become impatient when you're boiling a pot of water and you leave the kitchen and you come back to see the, the pot is going to catch on fire because all the water is gone because you don't walked off and got busy. <laughs> but that's essentially not really as hot, but it's not really that hot. But precious metals like gold, something that is worth so much and is so valuable, it melts at a point of 1,948 degrees. That's almost five times hotter than the boiling po point of water. Gold. Something so precious takes so much heat. If the gold can take that much heat, we as Christians... We as sound-minded people should know that we have to be patient. Sometimes under pressure, just like gold, just like a diamond, it comes from being pressurized. Some of the most beautiful things in life come after going through immense segments of pressure and pain. And I'm not encouraging you to seek the pain or the pressure. But I want you to know that when you're going through it, there's light at the other side. Sometimes the most beautiful things come when we are patient. 1 Corinthians 13 and 4, and I know you've heard this before. Love is patient. Love is kind. But love is patient. We have to be patient with people we love, not just our spouses, boyfriends, girlfriends, but our siblings, people we come in contact with. You know, like I said, the fact is there are people in this world that get on my ever loving nerves. Can you hear me say that again? My ever loving nerves. Okay. But I have to remind myself that even in my frustrations, even in the moments where these people are the last people on the face of the earth that I want to interact with. God loves them too. God loves all of us. So sometimes we got to take a step back. Be like, you know what? You just made me mad. And my old self probably would have just fought you on spot. <laughs> or cursed you out. Or gave you a piece of...